Mace, what what has the the progress from you? You know, we talked to you. I guess it was in maybe July. You know, July, August. I think is when it was. Mm. You were healthy, but you you weren't all the way there. And it didn't it didn't seem like in the exhibitions they wanted to push you too much. Where are you now? And, and it looks better and better every game. Right. Yeah. I'm just. Um at this point, just finding my rhythm. Um, you know, I haven't played in a long time, so now that I can, you know, play more minutes now and uh, just get used to playing with those guys, it's definitely, definitely getting better every game. I feel like the chemistry uh, is getting a lot better, um, and just my rhythm. I feel like it's coming back. Not so much on the offensive end. I feel like I can score when needed, but like the pace of game and getting my teammates involved and stuff like that. So I, th I think it's coming. Do you have any effects at all from the from the injury? I can see a little bit, you know, um, just from not playing, you know, sitting out, because I couldn't do anything for like three, four months, you know. Um, and then getting back to play, you know, my shape, stuff like that. But it's definitely getting there. It's getting a great time for sure. Mace, when you when you play on a team like this, where you guys are playing so many guys, minutes are going to vary, and you got some really talented guys that don't start. What's that take? For a team to buy in, knowing there's going to be some pretty good guys who don't get to start, there's going to be some guys who have to come off the bench, there's going to be some guys whose minutes are up and down night to night. Yeah, um, it's big. You know, everyone knowing their assignment, everybody knowing their role on the team, um, it's big for our team. You know, we got a lot of guys that can play a lot of minutes. And the way we're playing up and down, um, I feel like that's needed. So, you know, when somebody needs to come off the bench, somebody starts, you know, doesn't play a lot as much as the people coming off the bench, uh, it definitely helps because – your strength, you know, you're together. So as long as people don't worry about stats and people just worry about wins, we'll be fine. What does it tell you about it? Sorry. Uh, what does it tell you about a guy like Sam who started almost every game last year and, and he seems to sort of bought into coming off the bench this year? It says a lot. I feel like he's playing well too, um, just coming off the bench, understanding his role, you know, finding his spots. Um, he's doing well, along with some other guys, you know, that, that have started before at previous schools or here and, and, and it's not starting now. I feel like everybody's buying into the role. Mason, you talked a little bit about trying to find your rhythm. With a team as deep as this, with how many rotations are going in and out, how does that impact not only your ability to find a rhythm and get in a rhythm, but for just the team as a whole? Um, understanding that it may not be your night every night. You know, Coach uh, Pagis and everyone is doing a great job of understanding that, telling the team that. Uh, we got a lot of weapons, so um, if it's – night that I can get 10 assists, I'm going to get 10 assists. If it's a night that I can, you know, score 15, 20 points, then it may be so. So anything that anyone can do for the team to win, I feel like that's all we need to focus on. How good is that, though, to have, like, you're, you're versatile. I feel like Jared can do it. A lot of guys can do different things. When you have a team that has a bunch of guys that contribute, how important is it for you guys to always – Maybe pick up the slack in one area. I mean, it's it's going to be different areas every night, isn't it? Right, most definitely. You know, um, just in my case, like this is the first time I've came off the bench since I was at my first school. So I can kind of see, like, the game develop off the bench. You know, I feel like the same way with – I didn't know Sam started every game, but um, I feel like he sees the game too off the bench. And, you know, starting with defensive energy, you know, we try to, we try to you know, hold our points under 60, the opposite teams. And – if we can do that, we got a chance to win. And I feel like, you know, like I just said, like some night it may be somebody scoring night. Somebody needs to get like four, three steals to help the team win. But um, if everybody wants to win, I feel like we know what we need to do. Are there are there uh, guys you watch in basketball or watch growing up defensively? Are there like guys you used to pick up little things from? Defensively? Uh, that's funny because I never was really like a defensive player. <laughs> I was more of like the offensive. Uh, but, you know, what? Coach McGee says you, you got to play defense to play. So I haven't really thought about that question. Um, I just love Chris Paul. You know, I love what he brings to the game. I love his decisions off ball screens. Um, I love him leading teams. I love him defensively. You know, he's not really a, um, someone you can go at on defense, you know, just pinpoint. But um, no, nobody in particular. <laughs> Uh, how has this week of practice gone coming off of that game against Navy where on both ends of the floor you guys looked a lot more active than in that winning, than that game against Furman? Right, it's going good. We understand, you know, we lost a tough one at Furman. We weren't expecting that. It kind of punched us in the mouth. Um, so each week has gotten better, honestly. You know, going into the Bahamas, we're playing some pretty good competition. So we're trying to get ready for that now. Uh, we're looking for Detroit Mercy on Saturday. We're trying to get that win and 
just keep pushing, keep getting better. What do you feel like the primary difference was in the Navy game compared to the Furman game? I feel like the way we started the game, you know, I was like, um, just little stuff, you know, when you're watching a loss and then you go to the next game, try to fix it. Um, I was just told Jay, Jay Witt to get the tip. Like, I feel like we hadn't won the tip in two games. And I was, it's just something small, you know. Um, we won the tip, you know, we started off with a, a, a point and then we got a stop and then we turned the ball over. Then we kept Malik diving on the floor for the ball, made a pass. Um, and, and it just kept, we fed off the energy. And the second group, you know, we get a, did a great job. We've been doing a pretty good job um, coming in and keeping that spark um, and just increasing the lead. I feel like that's what happened. You mentioned the play by Malik. He had your first four assists. What, right. What's that mean when your big man is playing like that? You know, man, uh, it, it, it does a lot for your team, you know, because he's unselfish, man. And he gets a lot of slack, but, you know, we really look for him to um, be a key for this offense and defensively. Um, when, when Malik is playing free-minded and at his best, we're, we're a lot better team. So we're just going to keep encouraging him um, and just focus on winning. I feel like everybody else will have a, a great mindset. Mason, when Malik is passing the ball like that, you know, against Navy, it seemed like the ball was popping, and it was kind of going through almost him where, where he was on the floor, where against Furman, it was, it was much more stagnant. It seemed like you guys were – you know, not as aggressive as far as sharing the ball, that pop, pop, pop that, that Ross wants. Um, how much does that help you when Malik is, is playing like that and finding guys? It helps a lot, you know, but that not just Malik, but that's with everyone. Um, like I've said before, like, if we just have guys that don't worry about the stat line and just worry about wins, I feel like that take care of everything because um, you see that extra pass. You see when you can attack. You see when you need to um, bring it back out, run some offense just naturally. Uh, playing the game and wanting to win, do what's best for that possession. Um, once everyone realizes that, I feel like people starting to do that would be better. When, when you're trying to play fast, and you're trying to play faster than, than a team has played in the past, I think people can focus on just how fast you're running. But there's when, that, when, when you talk about that ball movement, do you have to learn to make quick decisions, like the ball hits your hands and you got to know, I have the shot or I got I to gotta swing it? Yeah, Coach McMahon emphasizes that. He doesn't want the ball to stick. Um, and I'm trying to get better at that too, you know, just sometimes um, waiting to see a possession develop rather than just moving the ball. Um, I feel like people are starting to learn quicker. Um, it's not taking a lot of time in people's hands. Um, also allows uh, more possessions as well because um, the defense, they're not used to playing this type, type of defense of our offense. So um, if we can just keep progressing in Coach McMahon's style, I feel like you'll see a, a huge, huge um, advance in scoring and efficiency. Mason, the Piggies made the comment after the Navy game saying, no more Bothwells, like trying to make sure that one guy doesn't kill you continuously. Detroit Mercy's kind of got someone like that in Antoine Davis. Uh, talk about the challenges that he presents, not only to Detroit Mercy, but Detroit Mercy as a whole. Right. Antoine Davis is, is a great player. Um, I've kept up with him just because I was a mid-major, um, like all the mid-major players. Um, but Bothwell can't happen again. Uh, no one can come in here and have 30 and, and win. Um, that you just set yourself up for a failure at that point. So we want to really shut down the team's best player. If we do that, I feel like we got a, a great chance to win. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Anything else?